Remember, guys, obey my commands at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch him up. First round underway in this scheduled 10 rounder. How do guys that are inside fighters tend to get themselves into trouble? Well, you watch football. You watch sometimes on the specialty teams where you're coming down to cover a punt. Well, you want to get down there. You're anxious to get to that receiver real fast. And what do you do? You overshoot. You don't control yourself when you get close. Well, it's the same thing. You're an inside fighter. You're anxious to get inside. Control yourself. Don't run in so quick where you run into something or you smother yourself. Nice combo by Golden. 90 seconds to go here in this round. Destructive uppercut. Blocks it away. Final ten seconds of round number one. And the bell rings, signifying the end of the round. Golden's corner better explain to him clearly why he lost that last round. His accuracy was way off. Well, if you're looking to find chains on the beach, you go out there with a metal detector. Well, right now, we need a punch detector. He needs a punch detector. He needs a jab to find the mark. Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. Move in. And he just holds on there. Good job on the two-punch combo by Golden. Hey, Golden's just punching air that time. His opponent was able to get out of the way. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. Halfway through this round. Yeah, that's it. That's a fierce left hand that landed by Golden. Good work with the uppercuts. Nice job there. Keep it tight inside. He clinches when he Come gets on. to the inside. <laughs> Blocks that punch. Way to protect the midsection. Yeah. 
And that's the end of round two. Golden's putting this forth an effort, make it but he's not being effective in that regard. Move no, he's not. He's not landing when he needs go. to land. And it kind of reminds me, he's a banger, too. He can yeah, punch a little. It reminds me of an old saying that a trainer once told me. It doesn't mean anything to have a big punch. It's kind of like having a military weapon, a bomb. What good is it if you don't have a missile to get it to the target? Right now, he needs a missile to get that punch. He needs to set it up, and he's not doing that. He digs in, trying to bank away body shots with the combo. He just missed that shot up top. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. Work to the head, the right hand landed. Block! Block! Coming to the halfway point of this third round. He got hit, but he sends it right back. Blocks a shot and then does nicely to work on his own. That is a big right hand after eating one himself. Teddy, I've heard you say it many times before, but the better fighters have a wide array of punches. Yeah, well, you have to because obviously your opponent is going to adjust to what you're doing. You want to keep them off balance, stay effective. Just like that. Just Able like to get that. rid of that one. He's in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teaching. Let's give the trainers credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. Scored well upstairs with the right hand. And round three comes to an end. Some guys just get out of the gate well, and such is the case tonight. Teddy's scorecard has him up three rounds to zip. Well done that time, landing the counter punch. with the left hand. A sound combination by Golden. Good looking right hand after he got hit. Golden's got a little something coming back at him. A counter punch scored. Halfway through round number four. Golden's not firing off the big power punches. I gotta wonder why. Sometimes a guy is making a solid agreement in his mind that maybe if I don't hit him hard, he won't hit me hard back. He's not confident enough now to throw the punches without worrying about what to come back at him. There's a good right hand. Nothing there on the punch by Golden. Golden's got something to think about now. He just threw a punch and had one coming right back at him. His opponent scored well with the counter. Fourth round now with its last 10 seconds. Well, as that round comes to an end, it gives us a moment to kind of reflect on this overall fight. And, Teddy, my thoughts are pretty clear-cut. This is the kind of fight that just takes on a personality of its own. This is an all-out war. Yeah, this is kind of like watching a guy who's not on a budget. 
<laughs> you know, he's spending with both hands. You know, when he goes home, he's going to have no money in his pockets. And when this fight is over, these guys are going to have nothing left in the gas tank, and it's probably not going to a decision. Golden's wanting the counterpunch here. But that doesn't seem the route to go here in this fight, Teddy. No, he has to be honest with himself and see that. But, you know, people under pressure in all walks of life, you know, in the ring, especially, you see it right away. You, you kind of peek at it right away. It's obvious. Maybe, maybe he doesn't want to see what he has to see because then he would have to discipline himself. He's not ready to do that. Then he would have to make the change. Maybe he just wants to leave it this way. At the end of the day, people are going to say, oh, that guy fought the kind of fight that, you know, hard to fight with, you know, and he has an excuse. Maybe that's what's going on right now. Halfway into round number five here. Good counter punch. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. Keep doing what you do. Comes right back at him with a left hand. And that's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. Golden's putting forth a great combination there. Ten clicks of the tuck. And round five comes to an end. I think even the casual observer, the guy who doesn't watch a lot of boxing, can look at this right now and tell you he's winning this fight with ease. Yeah, I'm not worried about the casual observer. I'm worried about the so-called professional judge. Time and time again, he showed me that he does not know what he's watching sometimes. But you're right. In this case, it would be hard, almost impossible, to argue for the other fighter. You have to take a chance with this guy, all right? There you go. You got here we are, the start of another round, and if everything goes according to the way the first half of this fight went, he's going to be coasting in for an easy win. Well, if his opponent goes along with it, he definitely will, but maybe he'll change the script a little. Flip the script a bit. Pace yourself! Trying to go downstairs, but off target. Golden's work rate is very high. I looked at the punch stats, and you can see that he's a busy guy. I don't think he's an effective guy, though. A lot of these aren't landing. Well, you have a reason to think that, Joe. Guess what? I agree. They're not landing. Halfway through round six. You're doing great. You're not focused. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Return to sender. He gives him back one of his own. Good looking uppercut that time. And he's holding. Jam. Yeah. Fires right back at him. He missed with that headshot. Working our way towards the bell. Last 10 seconds of the sixth. Gets rid of that body shot. Well, you can just mark down another round for him there with this accurate, precise punching. How does his opponent escape from that? You got to use feints. You know, feints is really the Achilles heel to timing. I mean, you, you feint him and you throw his timing off. You let him think something's coming, but guess what? It's not coming. Way to block there. Got? 
targeting that jab with the right hand behind it. Golden's throwing a lot of punches right here, but not a lot of them are landing. And that can be very discouraging to the guy who's throwing them because he's working, but he's starting to get a little frustrated, a little concerned that he's not doing damage, as you said. And now a little combination punching, landing both shots. Unable to connect by Golden. At the halfway point of round seven. Took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. Defense easily turns into offense. Blocks a blow, sends an uppercut. And now committing to that midsection as the target with the combination punching. Good job! Go. Punch! Punch! Come up. Blocks the headshot. And the round comes to an end. I told you, I want you to go downstairs. Just upstairs, okay? Body this head. Let's I'm going to Jab, jab, rap. Right. Okay? That's what I want you. One, one, two. Uh, you gotta breathe. Just breathe. Relax. How you feeling out there? How you doing? It's not always about the highlight making knockdowns. As we're through seven rounds here, this has been just a fine display of boxing. And that's what it should be about. I mean, if you go to the ballpark, everybody likes to see home runs. I know. But the teams that win the World Series, usually the better pitching. The teams that could have defense, keep you off bounds a little bit, they're the ones that are going to the championship. This guy understands what's important, what's going to get him to the top. Well, all of us can see the success he's having with the uppercut. How come his opponent can't? What should he be looking for? Well, what he needs to do is he has to be aware where it's coming. He knows it comes when he's inside and it's coming up the middle. He needs to take his glove and just dip it down, drop it a little bit, open it up, and kind of put it underneath his chin a little bit to block that punch. Well, it's supposed to be fighting, but instead he's hugging. Putting his punches together, landing two shots there. There you go. The halfway point of round number eight. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Seconds to go. So he takes a breather between Let's rounds go. after he what just put forth more of the same punishment. Teddy, we've been sitting here Let's all night over. long as he lands these thudding blows. You can just hear the damage landing. Yeah, and I can feel them. Some fluids that I don't really want are coming onto my shirt. This is it. You heard it. They are back to action here, but that action has only favored one man. Completely one-sided. Hard to see the scorecards coming into play here with how dominating he's been. Wow, what an uppercut. 
Block and counter back. Golden's got those earmuffs on. He's got his hands tight against his body. But Teddy, still, some things are getting through. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like driving a car, Joe. You know, and the, the weather's a little bad. And you say, I, I want to be safe here. I'm going to stop the car. You don't stop and park the car in the middle of the highway. Where cars are coming. I mean, he stopped right there in the middle of the highway. Cars are coming. You know, pull off somewhere. You know, get the heck out of there. Find the right parking spot. That's a big uppercut that just crashed home. Golden's opponent landing an effective counter punch right there. Nice job on the inside right there, just creating some space. Hey, have it your way. Golden's the victim of a powerful hook. Cover up, cover up. He engages in the clinch. Hate yourself. Keep moving, keep moving. Stay inside. Good job with another left hand. You can tell he's just looking to survive. Golden's holding his opponent right now, just hugging him. Yeah, he's doing what he has to do. Look, they work on this in the gym, Joe. We look at all the things where you work on the pads, you work on the heavy bag, putting punches together, but you work on this, on moments when you're in trouble and when you have to survive. Distance, such a key factor always, Teddy, when it comes to defense. With his good foot movement, he's been keeping that distance. His opponent, how does he close that gap properly? Well, first of all, he's got to use his jab to close it because he's getting picked off coming in. He's getting pot shotted. So he's got to have something coming at his opponent that keeps him distracted. Use that jab. Now, don't use it conventionally, Joe. You jab it at the head, you're not finding nothing. You're just finding space. So jab a little lower. Drop the sights a little bit. Jab at his chest. Just so you touch something, and then you can work your way in. You can start to find them a little. Tenth and final round underway. And he ties up on the inside. He stays committed to the body. Just an excessive amount of holding here. Just much too much clinching. Good solid shots with the combo downstairs. Well off the mark by Golden. Close again. That worked out really well. Throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that. I shake it off. Oh, and there you go. Down he goes. Uppercut did the damage. Two, three. So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? So this is where instincts kick in. You got to start moving that head automatically right now. You don't want to stay in the middle. just scored with. Once again, he goes down. Can he survive this? Three, four, get on! I give him a lot of credit for even getting up from that knockdown, but he still has to impress and move forward here. Yeah, I applaud him. I give him credit, but I also recognize that he's in good shape. That's one of the reasons he got up. shot comes in how is he gonna survive this once again he hits the deck he's gonna have to find a way Four. Let's go. Five. six seven stand stand there's just no quit in this guy he's been damaged but still he's trying to make a fight of it look i love that about him the fans love that about him it's great but he's gotta learn oh a big shot comes home for him Oh, this is gonna be close. He may be able to survive the round, but he has Three, gone down now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, up, nine, up, ten. That's it. 
The fight is over. Golden's night has ended early here. Unable to go the distance, he couldn't rise up and beat the count. That's what you want to see, a guy who can close the show and finish with style. He ends up a knockout victor tonight. And that's what his trainer wanted. His trainer was even telling him, step it up a little bit because he knew this was possible and they got it. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself a great night.